Now with a look at what stories are making the headlines this Boxing Day, it's the ITV News. Good evening. The woman who was shot dead in a pub on Merseyside on Christmas Eve has been named as 26-year-old L. Edwards. She was out celebrating with friends and family when shots were fired at the entrance of a pub in Wallasey. Four other people were injured. One of them is still in a critical condition. Ben Chapman reports. It is not how any family should have to spend Christmas. The father of L. Edwards was among some 30 relatives who came here on Boxing Day to leave flowers and tributes outside the pub where she was shot dead on Christmas Eve while out celebrating with her sister and friends. L. was 26, a beautician who died after being shot in the head by a gunman who'd opened fire at the pub entrance. Police have made it clear she was not the intended target. Her colleagues posted today, We are heartbroken, thinking of your family right now, Elle. Thank you for all the laughs and happiness you brought into our lives. Rest in paradise, Angel. This afternoon, officers continued their investigation, searching for any clues to help them identify the gunman. The leader of the council here implored anyone who knows who's responsible to speak up. I can't tell you how angry I am at the the individual and the people involved in this. How dare they take someone's life from them? If anyone knows, has any information about this, you need to let the police know or us as a council know. And quite honestly, if you don't, then you're complicit in this. The flowers left by L. Edwards' family join many more left by members of this community. Shocked and angered by an indiscriminate act of violence at what should be a time of celebration, which has robbed a young woman of her future. One of the messages left with the flowers here tonight is one from L. Edwards' father that says he has lost the light of his life. Four men were also injured here, one of them critically. Police will be trying to establish the motive for the shooting, which the local MP, Angela Eagle, has described tonight as mindless. Ben Chapman in Wallasey, many thanks. The Russian Defence Ministry has said that a Ukrainian drone attack in southern Russia has left three people dead. CCTV footage on social media appears to show the moment of the strike at the Engels Air Base in the early hours of the morning. Russia says its air defences shot down the drone and that falling debris killed three technical staff. A spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force said the explosions were the result of what Russia was doing on Ukrainian soil. In the US and Canada, at least 54 deaths have now been linked to freezing temperatures in a severe winter storm. The worst affected area is the city of Buffalo in New York State, where authorities have said conditions are like a war zone. Callum Watkinson reports. This restaurant in New York State promised on its website to reopen when it's safe. But for now, it remains closed encased in frozen fragments thrown up from Lake Erie. As forecasters said the freezing conditions will lift slowly, dozens of deaths have now been linked to the blizzards, at least 25 of them in Erie County, where crews sent out to rescue stranded citizens themselves got into trouble and needed help. Uh, two thirds of the equipment that went out during the height of the storm got stuck. We had to send uh, specialized rescue crews to go get the rescuers. It was just horrendous. And it was horrendous for uh, literally 24 hours in a row. Uh, we're used to snow here. We can handle snow. But with the wind, uh, the blinding uh, uh, the views, it was complete whiteouts and the extreme cold, it was some of the worst conditions that any of us have ever seen. And with thousands of flights cancelled on some of the busiest travel days of the year, these scenes in Portland were repeated at airports nationwide. When I looked at the app, it actually said that my flight was moved three days from now and it has two stops instead of just one. I've been trying to get out of Portland since yesterday morning, 6 a.m., four flights cancelled. 
Drone operators at Lake Michigan captured the beauty that these conditions can create. But on the whole, the white Christmas of 2022 has been more of a nightmare than something to dream about. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. A tenth person has died after an explosion at a block of flats in Jersey earlier this month. 73-year-old Kathleen McGuinness, who was injured and had been in hospital since December the 10th, died on Christmas Day. She lived in a building next to the one that collapsed. Now, there was concern from retailers that the Boxing Day sales would be down this year with rail strikes and the cost of living crisis keeping shoppers away. But early indications suggest that footfall was up this morning by as much as half on this time last year. Despite that increase, customer numbers are still much smaller than they were before the pandemic and the sales are not what they used to be, as Ian Woods reports. It's harder than ever to get people to part with their money, even if it is a bargain. Soaring inflation and energy costs, plus the impact of rail strikes, had led to dire predictions for Boxing Day sales. But early figures suggested Britain's shops were busier than this time last year. So we've had strong footfall for Boxing Day, but you know the weather's been gorgeous, it's been sunny. Last year, some people were still very concerned about COVID. It would be very unwise to be too optimistic for 2023. We've still got inflation in double digits and we've still got wage growth a lot lower and strikes galore. So I think this might be a bit of a temporary boost. And we don't yet know how much they were actually spending. Everything has just gone up in price a lot lately. Uh, but, yeah, it's useful to have the sales where then, you know, you could grab a few bargains. It's quite busy, but I thought it would be busier than that. You look at my hands. <laughs> They're filled. Yes, I got some great deals. For decades, Boxing Day was a shopping bonanza. Excuse me, are they good bargains? Uh, How much have they been reduced? Even ten years ago, you'd see long queues from before dawn. <laughs> and department stores would invite cameras inside to film the rush of bargain hunters. This year, amid gloomy retail forecasts, we were told to stay outside on the street. Online shopping has had a big impact on footfall, of course, but there's no denying that times are hard. I think it's, it's all about the economical situation in the country and everybody has to think about twice, maybe more than two times, when they make purchase, or take decisions about buying something. One bonus for London in particular, the streets were full of tourists, who can take advantage of the generous exchange rate due to our economic woes. Ian Woods, ITV News. Now, after a six-week break for the World Cup, the Premier League is back. England captain Harry Kane showed he has recovered from missing that penalty against France by scoring in today's first match as Tottenham fought their way to a draw at Brentford. Chris Scudder reports. And that is all we have time for for now, but I'll be back with the latest at 10 o'clock tonight from all of the team here. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Feel good weather continues through.